Hello again, my name is Rodney Reynolds and welcome to another video review. Today I will be looking at the Shuttle SS50. This is a Pentium 4 based bare bones computer system. What is included in this product is the manual for the motherboard, the FS50. You also have the installation guide for the SS50. And there's utilities, drivers and software that comes with this on a CD. A power cable. There's also cables here for things like your hard drive and floppy drive, as well as the S video to composite video connector. You also get a heat sink in here. This is a copper core with aluminum on the outside, as well as the fan. I'll show you how all this gets installed a little later. And right here we have some screws as well as tie downs, and of course, the product itself. On the front of this unit, there is one five and a quarter inch bay up top, one three and a half inch. You have two USB connectors right here. You have a place for an audio mic as well as audio headphones. You also have a firewire connector right here on the front, a power button as well as a reset button and a couple of lights here for the hard drives as well as the power on. Here at the back, right here is actually where the power supply vents here. I'll show you that when I open the case up, but it's a very, of course, mini power supply. This is where you would be connecting the power to the power supply. Right here we have a COM port, another COM port. Right here is actually the video. This is the SIS315 VGA video. You have right here a composite out, so you go from either to an S-Video to an S-Video or go to an S-Video to a composite. Of course, as I've shown you before, there is an S-Video to composite cable included in this package. Right here we have two more Firewire ports here on the back. We also have a network connection right here, 10 slash 100. You also have an additional two USB ports right here. You have a mouse port right here, keyboard right here, and as well, you have all of this for your audio. Now this does come with 5.1 audio as well. Also here at the back, you'll notice that there's a couple of slots here. This is for PCI cards to be installed. Right here is a fan. This ports air out of the case, and that's quite necessary, considering the fact this case is very small. Now removing the cover on this is very, very simple. You just remove a screw right here, right here, and right here, and you just remove the cover and, of course, install the components inside that you need to install. Looking inside this case, you can certainly see that it is very confined and small. I'll just go through a few things that is inside of here. You have the power supply, which gives feeds to three Mullix connectors, two, four, things like your hard drive, your DVD, your CD-ROM drives, as well as a floppy drive connector right here. You can actually install two PCI cards. There's two PCI slots inside of here. You also have the socket for 78. This is the socket for the Pentium 4 Intel CPU. And of course, the heat sink and the fan goes mounted down onto here as well. Right here is two spaces to put DDR memory. I was using the Crucial 2700 memory in here. Right here is places to put your hard drive connectors. The IDE connections are again right there. And also on the other side here we have the floppy drive connector. Now, having a closer look here at this side of the case, since the cover is off, you can certainly see how small that power supply actually is. Also right here we have a couple of slots. As I mentioned, you have a five and a quarter inch, as well as one hidden three and a half, and of course one three and a half that you can put a floppy or zip drive in. Now, the neat thing here is that you can actually unscrew two screws and just pull out this unit, install what you need in here, and just bring it back to the case, pop it back in, screw it in. So that's very handy, certainly, because as well, it's good to remove when you're installing things like your cables as well as the memory here or connecting anything else in this area of the motherboard. Let me show you how easy this is actually to install this particular cooler into the system. It's very well designed actually and the clip design on it makes it extremely easy to both install and remove. First thing to do, drop in a CPU and apply some thermal compound. Next you want to drop in the heat sink. Now this heat sink has a right and a wrong way to be installed. You can see here this is kind of a tarnished kind of surface. 
this surface is not. This is the surface that goes onto the CPU, like so. So once that's down, then you pop the fan on top of it. Now having a closer look here at this fan mount, it's very interesting because it has a little clip here that makes it extremely simple to attach this onto the heat sink. Now, the side that goes down first is this side right here. So you go ahead and pop that, just clip that side in first. Now once that's done, you go ahead and just pull it over and push it down and basically that's it. It has been installed. To remove it, you just go ahead and pinch and pull it up and it's removed. Again, this design this clip design here is extremely good and it makes it so easy to install and remove this whole cooler. The next thing to do is pop in a few components here like a DVD player or a CD-ROM or a burner or a combination. If you want to pop in a floppy you can certainly do that as well. And of course as you can see here things are getting pretty tight inside of this particular box right now. And of course let's not forget you need some memory right here as well of course as some kind of a Pentium 4 Intel CPU. I recommend trying to get one that's a overclockable 1.6A so you can overclock it and get some good results as well. Now you can notice that as I mentioned it is getting very very tight in here and even if you were to put another card like a PCI card in here the space is getting pretty limited however that is to be expected from a box that is extremely small and compact. Let's now get on and look at some benchmarks using this particular setup. I will be using Quake 3 Arena as well as 3D Mark 2001 SE as well as a program called Sci Software Sandra to do some benchmarks so you can get some indications of how fast or slow this system is. I'm using an Intel Pentium 4 1.6A at 2.4 gigahertz. I am also using, of course, the integrated SIS 315 VGA. Now this, of course, is the VGA that's built into this system. You could put some kind of other PCI car in here if you wanted to maybe get some better results on the video side of things. Now with this particular card, the SIS 315, of course, you could uh, go into the BIOS and actually assign up to 64 megabytes of memory. The first benchmark program I will be looking at is Quake 3 Arena. I will be using a video mode of 800 by 600, a color depth of 16 bit. Geometric detail is at high, the texture detail is at half, the texture quality is at 16 bit, and the texture filter is at bilinear. So let me go ahead now and do a result at these settings. And the final result is 70.6 frames per second, certainly not bad if you're having some fun at a LAN party and if you're into Quake 3 Arena. Now next let me get on to using a benchmark called 3 d Mark 2001 SE. And the final result in 3 d Mark 2001 SE is 1390. Now this is certainly not a very high result at all. If you consider a system like this at 2.4 gigahertz and if you're using like a TI series GeForce 4 card, you're probably going to be getting around 10,000 on this result. So certainly a result approximately 1,400 here is very, very low. However, again, this is an integrated onboard SIS315 video cards, so certainly keep that in mind. Another option here, of course, as I mentioned before, is to go out and buy yourself a faster, maybe a GeForce 2 card using a program called Sci Software Sandra. This is the downloadable free demo you can download from their website on the internet. Now looking at three results here today, the CPU benchmark, the CPU multimedia benchmark, as well as the memory benchmark. Going into the CPU memory result here you can see it's pretty high at 4580 MIPS. You can see that it's pretty much outperforming everything else here in the list. Going on to the CPU multimedia benchmark, you'll notice that again it's outperforming everything else in the list at 9512.